Yeah, so quickly, welcome to the Deutsche Museum from my side as well. Um, I'm thrilled that you are here tonight because I got you to know when I was on an on a event, I think it was half a year ago, and I thought it's a really nice format uh, and I'm happy we can uh, provide this uh, location now for, for 15 times 4 as well in the Deutsche Museum now. So um, who am I and why am I standing here? So I'm a trained physicist or physics teacher and um, I like to mess around with old stuff or with rubbish sometimes as well so people might ask okay why are you in a museum ah that's why you are in a museum other would say um, this is really old cool stuff but I like to mess around as well with really rubbish and I will show you uh, in a couple of minutes what I mean with this um, because I like to interact with people to understand more about science um, science and technology this is the perfect location in Munich or in Europe or wherever, because uh, the Deutsche Museum is one of the biggest science museums uh, in, in Europe, uh, at least. And um, we do have really cool artifacts and stuff. And if you have some time uh, in between, you might want to stroll around as well in the museum a little bit. Um, but be aware, um, parts actually half of the museum is closed temporarily because uh, we are in a process of renewing ourselves and we will open in 2020 we will open 19 new exhibitions which are just in the process of renewing um, and I think it's really nice because outside we have some sponsors um, like with the robotic stuff and uh, that fits directly to what we will open up in 2020 we will for example have a new robotics um, uh, exhibition um, and uh, so now you can see stuff that you won't be able to see like the old ships and everything um, that's just to let you know if you have some spare time in the afternoon go in the museum and check it out but um, for now I want to have a little bit of interactives with you because the Deutsche Museum is as well uh, well known for its interactive demos and um, this format the science shows we are doing now or that I am doing with you now is one of these parts uh, of the interactive elements of the museum and um, yeah as I mentioned before already uh, welcome here and uh, ah, damn it didn't we do the, the, the technical rehearsal before Nobody realized. Uh, can you read it <laughs> in, on the top? So over ye the yellow thing, what is written there? Yeah, can you read it? Huh. Okay, yeah. I, I mentioned it before, so you knew it probably what I wanted to say. Um, but maybe we should correct this. It's a bit a shame. Uh, it's a messed up. Um, <laughs> so, oh, who else wants to read it out now? So I think we have a, a quite a Russian community. Maybe this sounds a bit Russian. No, can you try? No. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> so you see, I like to mess around as well with your brain a little bit um, because you even now know that I was writing rubbish there. It was not totally rubbish, I admit, but your brain works like this. Um, and we will hear a little bit more about senses today as well, so it fits pretty good. And uh, your brain needs these senses, but your brain doesn't work like autonomous. It doesn't uh, like uh, take all the senses and don't filter it at all. Your brain filters quite a lot. And it actually builds the world around you that you perceive with your senses. It builds it up on the knowledge that your brain has gotten before. So like you learned to read, to read English, you can speak English, hopefully. Um, and uh, so that's why your brain makes sense. Your brain is actually a kind of a sense making machine. It reads something and then connects it to the known stuff before and oh, it makes sense. There's written, welcome to the Deutsche Smoothie. No. Fum, fim, no. Okay, so even if you know it, your brain makes sense everywhere. And um, that's a thing, I'm a teacher, or I used to be a teacher before. That's pretty important to know or to be aware of that. Do you know this thing, Nürnberger Trichter, we call it in Germany. That was the idea like hundreds of years ago, how you teach students. You just have like a funnel, is it a funnel, Trichter? Funnel? put it poof and then pff, everything in. No, of course, we all know that doesn't work. And the reason is this, we call it constructivism in uh, yeah, when we talk teachers and teachers, you know. Um, and uh, so today 
quite a lot of people were here. So um, these two guys, they couldn't come. I, I should say sorry. I invited them, but they have no time today. Um, you know them. Yes. All fine with them? No. What's wrong? Some, something, something is wrong with the eyes, right. But in the first glance, you, you realize who these are, these people. Um, who is it, actually? George and Angie, you know, yeah. For every gender, of course, they have somebody. Um, if I flip them around now, something weird happens in your brain. If I would have started with these pictures, your brain or you would have not maybe in the first glance realized who these people are. And you would have immediately seen that there's something wrong. And this is, again, if we talk about senses and how we build our reality, this is the same thing. If we see somebody, we, or if we see the world, we cannot manage all the informations in a time. So our brain takes important parts, eyes, mouth, to realize if we know these people. And if we have it the upside down, then we immediately see, oh, that's not right. And um, on the other hand, if these parts are right, we still realize if we know these people or not. So just a little bit about um, yeah, uh, perception, because this is, I think, a really important thing if we talk about uh, learning about learning in general and as well about learning with science. Uh, for me, it's really important to perceive, to make perceptions with experiments, with phenomena, and that's why we do these science shows. Okay, um, so I thought we can do something locally today, um, but then um, normally I do science and technology with tradition in, in Bavaria, beer, of course we need beer, and, um, but it's, it's a daily, it's, it's a... Um, it's not an evening uh, thing we do today. So I thought, okay, maybe we don't brew beer on stage and drink it interactive. It might be the wrong uh, yeah, setup. So, um, but as well, what do we have traditionally in, in Munich? Uh, like the Oktoberfest, beer is important and um, music is important. So I thought, okay, let's do some music together and take music as um, an, yeah, a, a point to learn about science. And um, on the Oktoberfest, we have a big band. We don't have here, but actually we can build a little band today. Um, in the museum, we do have exhibitions. These are not interactive. As I said before, sometimes it's really old and very uh, uh, unique stuff you cannot touch. But then let's do some stuff that is not so unique. And for this, um, we do have these tubes here. And maybe you can help a little bit to hand them out. So um, these tubes, now I come to the rubbish part of my life. This is actually, it's not rubbish. I, I bought it uh, at the, at the um, uh, worker, no, how do you say? Baumarkt in English? Storage, the, the, the store Baumarkt, help? No, you don't, you don't have it in English language, no? Okay. <laughs> yeah, where you bought, buy bricks and stuff and hammers and stuff. So, but please now, before you take all the long tubes, I know you guys, you like long tubes more probably, um, take just randomly, please. We need, need tubes from every size in the audience. audience. And um, these tubes, I cut them in a specific length. And we will see what happens if you cut them in a specific length. Your task is now, you should uh, be my band and um, make music with these instruments. Do you want some? What? Yeah. More? No? Who else? You're afraid of throwing? Yeah, okay. I understand. Um, so, before you start trying out, um, we don't have the time to clean this every time, yeah, you know? I mean, you all have an idea of how to make sound with this. Uh, I mean, I now, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, opfern? I opfer myself? Uh, so I sacrifice myself for science now, okay? I mean, we do this with lots of school kids and kindergarten kids, so I sacrifice myself. And this you know. <laughs> no, doesn't work. You have to close it. This is like a pan flute. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> There are germs around and everything. Don't do it, please. Okay, this works. How else can we make sound with this tube? Nice. Maybe this? 
They are. It's okay. It's not great, I have to say. How else? More ideas. That sounds kind of okay. -ish. Where did this come from? Yeah, you, you can all do applause, right? This you can. So now use one of these and one hand. All right. Sounds nice as well. Even if I like applause too, um, by the way. No, um, so if you just push it on your hand, that works. And um, now you might have realized that we have different tones here in the audience now. And let's check, here we go, if we can play a little bit with it. So we should have these six tones. So like, let's start with black, 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 black. Do we have black? Black people, uh, not black people, sorry. Uh, black <laughs> two people here, okay. Yeah, right. Give, give me some feedback with tone, that sounds good. Do we have, uh, gray is actually just without anything. Blank. Yep, that sounds good. Yellow. Do we have yellow? Sounds good too. So red is like orange a little bit. Okay, a bit rare. Green. Good. Blue. Very good. And anybody without tube? You can? No? Man, I really wanted to throw. <laughs> Anybody else? Grab yourself one. So, now, that was okay-ish, but um, let's try this. I hope you are still fit and your perception works. So, actually, what is this? One dot means one bob, okay? Um, that's easy. What is this? Silence, it's a pause for physicists uh, or, it's, yeah. Well, it's silence, yeah. And I will count and you will all follow my um, guidance and uh, I think we have something about leadership I just saw uh, later on so that fits as well a bit and um, let's give it a try one two three four more wow, guys come on what's this <laughs> maybe I should try a different leadership now <laughs> um, okay concentration yeah Silence, silencio. Okay. One, two, three, four. Pretty good. That was great. Yeah, thanks a lot. So, be before you feel a bit bad about the multi-tone thing, I think that's my fault because I didn't think about if students or you guys are bored, you just peel it and then we have a multi-tone blank number, or you know what I mean. However, I think that worked fine and um, now I want to go a little bit in deep with you about the science behind it. And how does it come that a tube with different lengths makes different tones and we can play a little yeah, a song with it, uh, easy like that. And uh, as you all know, sound is something, has something to do with waves, sound wave. That's something even somebody without any physics background might know. And for this, um, physicists love um, models and they love to uh, make models to get uh, the idea of different things and for this uh, to show you one model about waves um, and traveling waves I, I want to invite somebody to help me um, just to be on the stage here and hold this yeah that's great thanks a lot so this is just a normal string a little bit elastic to make it nicer and um, let's make a wave with this string here and uh, you just have to hold actually it's really a very yeah, tough job there. Um, so how can we make a wave with this thing? You all know, you just poof, hammer on it, and then you see a wave traveling and be reflected on the other end as well. Um, that's one uh, way of waves, actually, this wave. And if you are a physicist now, you can talk about longitudinal and transversal waves. This is a transversal wave, 
I think it's the English word for it. I have no idea, actually. Um, so the idea is that the wave travels in this direction, you can see, but the string is going up and down. That's like orthogonal to this traveling direction. However, this is something we can have different waves, like a wave traveling, we can hammer on and then there happens something you see like this there are multiple waves and this is actually what we just have when we hammer in your our hands if we if we applause then you have different wavelengths different tones and this is just noise actually um what happens when you have a specific tube length is something different or similar let's say um this is uh, comparable if we have it with a specific a rhythm going then you see we have like um, let's say if I count always when it's to the top one two three four five that's a very low frequency tone you won't hear it probably it's a frequency of one maybe one Hertz for the nerds under us um, and uh, so if I want to fasten it that it's going faster we can try but what actually happens it's just going higher in, in the uh, amplitude, what physicists would say. It's just more energy in it, but it's not going faster. It's still one, two, three, four. It's still the same frequency, what physicists would say. If we want to have a different frequency, that's the same with the tube. One tube makes one frequency, one tone. If we want to have a different frequency, we have to shorten it. Let's shorten it by half, half, somehow. So what happens now? So yeah, you can do it perfect. You're a physicist, right? Yeah, ah, yeah. So what's the frequency now? Let's count it. One, two, three, four. It's double frequency. It's double amount in the same time period coming up and down. So this is actually a standing wave because what we just have here is um, the reflected wave on the other sa uh, side is uh, adding to the wave that I'm producing. So it's a standing wave. This is the first standing wave we can produce. The cool thing with these models, we co can even show another uh, level of standing waves. If we double the frequency now here, so now you have to hold because it's a little, little bit tricky. You can try then. And um, we can double now the frequency here and see what happens. So one, two, three, four. And it's even easier if we rotate it so you can see it probably better. Yeah, do you, you want to try or you want to hold? Okay, thanks. So, okay, so this is really easy now. And what you see now is a standing wave two with two mm, waves, let's say. And in the middle, we have a knot. There, actually, the rope is not moving at all. And this is something we can even go higher and higher. If we go faster now, double the, the, the frequency, we can even get two of these knots. So this is the standing wave in the, in the third uh, dimension, let's, or not dimension, in the third level. And oh, I'm tired. Do you want to try with three knots now? <laughs> if you rotate, yeah, rotate. One. Oh. Ah. OK, before you hurt yourself, maybe we try later, so I'm not responsible. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Applause for you. <laughs> Um, now, what I just showed you, that we have standing waves in different uh, levels, that's maybe the question if we can have it here too. So, you see, um, here, if you make it harder, it just hurts, doesn't, doesn't work. Uh, if you, um, yeah, it doesn't work actually, but if you blow, you can have first standing wave. And if I now blow harder, that works indeed, maybe. You can hear it. This is much higher. It's... Uh, the multiple of the first level frequency um, standing wave. So um, if you want to have this more uh, sophisticated, you would build maybe something like this. And then we are back in our exhibition where we have like the orf organs, organs, I think it's called. And here, that's a bit nicer, huh? If I blow hard here too, you see that's the same thing. Okay, now let me get back to our tube as well. I want to show you a simple 
demonstration that shows you that this has to do with the same phenomena. And we call this phenomena the, the addition of um, traveling waves, that waves, um, I think you say, uh, add up. Uh, you call it um, resonance. And so I have a tube here, a little bit nicer than those you have there, but it has two holes as well. What happens when I put it in this glass of water? What changes? What, one end is closed, and if I can now raise it or lower it, what happens as well? The water level, yeah. And um, what happens to the tube? Its inner volume is, is, is less. So, so the length of the tube can be adjusted, let's say. Um, and now I have another little gimmick, um, this kind of fork. Not for eating, of course, you know it. Um, if I hammer it on, do you hear something? No? How can I make it louder? Oh, really loud. No? You can't hear it? You can try later if you do this. I can show you can do this with a table as well. I think you guys in the front, you hear it. And now we have to check if the, um, uh, if the sound is good here, good enough. Otherwise, I have to cheat. What I want to show you now, this makes a tone which is called 512. Do we have musicians here? Yeah? What, what, what does it mean, 512, 512? Hertz, yeah. What is it? What kind of tone is it? Musicians around? Yeah, you can try. It's a C. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, this is a C. So it's just one tone, yeah? And um, I want to check now what happens if I hold it here. And now I prolong the length of the tube. Do you hear it? In the back as well? I can go a bit with my mic there. <laughs> no, it's not cheating. The longer the tube, the louder it gets, right? Okay, so it should be loudest when I'm there. Ah, the shorter the tube, the louder it gets. No. <laughs> Damn it. So what, what's the case with it? Science. It's science. Yeah, it's science. Okay, it's done. It's science. Good answer. <laughs> Maybe you might have realized that it's actually just one length that fits and that um, makes resonance. It makes it louder by resonance because the sound actually fits in this specific length. So a specific length makes a specific tone actually. So what we have in our tubes here is kind of a filter. We filter out the sound that fits in this length of, a, of, a, uh, of the tube. And by this we can um, play a song. If we have a different tone now, let's see if this works. This is 1024. It's a C as well. It's one uh, level higher. One, uh, how, how do you call it? Ah, oh, yeah, thanks for this. <laughs> okay, should it be uh, shorter now or longer? So we had this for 512, shorter. Let's check. There it was. Here we go. And it's actually half the length, yeah? Double the frequency, half the length. The same thing we just saw with the uh, with the gummy thing there. Okay, so, but there's one point that is not really working well with this model. And it's always with these models, they're nice to see, but it's not really like it is in real. Because sound is not a traveling wave like we saw it on the, on the um, string. It's more uh, comparable with a string that looks like and by chance I do have it, of course, um, with a string like this. That's flexible too. And now I would need, again, a hand to hold on stage. Volunteers. Great, thanks a lot. So for start, um, maybe just hold the string here. Looks a bit rubbish. It is rubbish, yeah. Um, and uh, let me do this. 
Ah, this we skip. So, um, so this is more like the model that is fitting to what happens with sound. Maybe you can pull it a bit more, right? Thanks. So do you all see the, the elements of the string that we could think would be the air, element, uh, the, the molecules or whatever, particles of air? And if we have sound traveling, what is really important to understand that not the whole string moves. It's not like if I clap, sound or air comes like this to you. Sorry, it's a demonstration. So um, it's more like air stands still and just the wave is traveling. Just the energy is by this wave. And we can see this maybe, I try, if I clap, something like a compression of air happens here. And this travels and comes back as well. Do you see? Yes or no? Yes, thanks. I have to tell my kids always to answer properly. I know this problem. <laughs> so, you see, the wave is coming back. This is more the correct model of um, sound waves propagating. Do you say this in English as well? Yeah. And, uh, but the cool thing about this demo is something, a little side effect I just discovered. So if you would hold, uh, or maybe actually I do it. Yeah. And you, do I have, a, do you have something? To, no, no, we will try. Do you have something to hammer on the string? Like a lighter? Metal? Yeah, me metal is great. So, because what I discovered recently, if I don't hold it here, but I hold it on this, this is just an empty uh, bean box or whatever. And what happens now if you ham hammer like this maybe on the, ooh, do you hear this? What does it remind you of? Oops, ah, we skip science, we don't do science. I wanted to explain you how this works. Hmm, you can ask me later. I wanted to show you now this. Um, Whoa, whoa, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm scared now. <laughs> okay, so how does it come that this sound sounds like a laser cannon? Thanks, I need your hand one more time. Um, so how does it come? That sounds like a laser cannon. It's two questions in one question, actually. So one is the physical question. Uh, why is this sound like this sound? And maybe for this, um, hold it here. We shorten the length of the spiral. And now do it. Bam. This is what we expect, kind of, yeah? Now it makes bam. Now prolong the, the tube. Make again. Doom. That's still not a laser cannon. More. Yeah, more. Now I think we can kind of hear it. So the longer the material, the better we hear the laser cannon. So and now, how does a laser cannon actually sound like? Can you describe it? A, a cow makes moo, yeah. And a laser cannon max makes pew. OK, and by saying pew, what actually do we say? Thanks a lot. <laughs> by saying pew, what do we do? P is a high pitch tone. P and U is a low pitch tone with lower frequency. Pew. And this is what happens here. This is, at the beginning, it's just noise. If we have a short uh, material, it makes just boo. The longer the material gets, the, lo the, the wider it's spread, the tone. Because higher frequencies travel faster through the material, and lower frequency, they are slower. And this is actually something that we rather know from light. You all have seen a rainbow, same effect. White light is like noise, let's say, and uh, we can see colors because they have different um, traveling, speed of traveling. Um, and uh, I don't go in details now, don't worry. Um, but it's the same effect uh, in theory. So um, this is the first part of the question, why physically it works like this. Second part of the question, why does it sound like a laser cannon? And uh, that's quite interesting because this guy, uh, he's a sound engineer in Hollywood. Um, he 
D Dan Bird, I think he's called, and he. This is a picture where he took the sound of the laser cannon because the laser cannon. It doesn't exist for all those who still think it does. Um, <laughs> I did it a long time, <laughs> yeah, for myself as well. Of course, it doesn't have a sound. So he had to find a sound for it that fits. And he found, like, uh, this is one of these antennas, big antennas, and it's just a straight string. Um, here we have it just rolled up. Doesn't make a difference. So what we need is a long uh, string, and we hammer on, and then we can have this laser sound. So it will be a Big disappointment if in 100, 200 years we will really have laser cannons um, and they make a different sound, definitely, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's a different problem. So, um, do we have two minutes more? Or? One minute. One minute. Okay. Fast experiment. Um, so, the last experiment you can do at home is something that we come back to traditions. Um, you can do like this here. Uh, if you want to build a short version of this Alphorn, you just need this and this. So um, what you do, you just take the straw, do it between your teeth. Actually, actually, small stuff is, is boring. Let's do it bigger. I don't know why you have these long straws. No idea. Uh, so flatten it. Then, mm, no, let's, again, so, like this. And then you cut like an, like an arrow out of it. And then you can, <laughs> blow. <laughs> Thanks. I, I, half a minute left? <laughs> 20 seconds. Do you want to help me? Then you are on stage already. Um, <laughs> do you want to help me blow the horn? To, to make a, a song out of it. So what you now, it's cool if you, when, I mean, that's perfect for me. Don't come up the stage, please. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, your task is now cut the straw while I am blowing. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, but it's the problem is it's really a one-way instrument. Doesn't work in the other direction. All right, thanks a lot for uh, joining uh, the science demo at the beginning of 15 times four. I wish you a lot of fun with. Uh, 15 times 4 here at Deutsche Museum. If you want to do more short, early, a little advertisement, um, if you want to do more of these hands on experiments and even in another location, like with having dinner, um, I'm doing as well science dinners. Uh, if you want, you can inform yourself on the website or on Facebook. So thanks a lot, have a lot of fun, and yeah.